The Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch is a biblical writing that is part of the writings accepted in the Bible of the Seventy. Same that later was the base to conform the Old Testament and the rest of the Christian Bibles. Although the Bible of the Seventy, it is accepted by the Coptic or Egyptian Church and therefore is also the Book of Enoch. This is considered an apocryphal text by Christian churches. The author of the Book of Enoch, is Enoch himself, 7th since Adam, grandfather of Lamech and great-grandfather of Noah, because it is he who is narrating it. The Book of Enoch is about 5,500 years old approximately antiquity, since Enoch was born 622 years after the creation of Adam. This means that this book is the oldest on earth. If the book of Enoch were 2nd century BC, as some sources mention, then the apostle Judas would never have said that Enoch was the seventh from Adam. The book of Enoch is the oldest document important that describes Hebrew cosmology. For a dozen centuries, European scholars knew the Book of Enoch only by numerous passages preserved in patristic literature. In 1773, the Scottish adventurer James Bruce found complete copies in Ethiopia. Numerous manuscripts of the Book of Enoch have since been found in monasteries Ethiopians. Numerous fragments of the book were found of Enoch among the so-called Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran. The importance of the Book of Enoch is little appreciated outside of the academic community. The comparison of his text with the New Testament books reveals that many Enochian doctrines were taken by the early Christians. It is not surprising that the Book of Enoch was highly appreciated by many of the Apostolic Fathers and of the Church. Enoch is important for another reason. Unlike the canonical books of the Bible, which were never intended to teach science. Sections of the Book of Enoch had the intention to describe the natural world. The narrator sometimes seems as if he explains heaven and earth to the admiring masses. Enochian cosmology is precisely the flat earth cosmology previously derived from canonical books. The Ends of the Earth The angel Uriel led Enoch in most of his travels. They made several trips to the ends of the earth, where the dome of the sky descended to the surface. For example, Enoch says, I went to the ends of the earth and saw huge beasts there, each different from the another and different birds, different from each other in appearance, beauty and voice. And to the east of those beasts, I saw the last ends of the earth where heaven rests. And the gates of heaven were open, and I saw the stars come out of heaven. Once again, Enoch says, I went in the direction to the north, to the ends of the earth, and there, at the end of the whole world, I saw a great and glorious seat. There I saw three open doors of heaven, when it blows cold, hail, frost, snow, dew and rain, through each of the doors the winds, they advance in a northwesterly direction. This agrees with Jeremiah 51 16 which says, bring out the mist from the ends of the earth, opens the crevices for the rain and takes the wind out of its stores. In the chapters. Next, Enoch travels to the ends of the earth in the west, south, and east. In each. Instead he saw three open gates of heaven. There were other things to see at the ends of the earth. On various occasions when Enoch and the angel they are beyond the dome of heaven, Enoch comments that there is nothing above or below. For example, and I came to an empty place. And I did not see neither a heaven above nor an earth below, but a chaotic and terrible place. An angel also showed Enoch the storehouses of the winds in the cornerstone of the earth. 1 Enoch 18, 1-4. I saw the treasures of all the winds, I saw how he had provided with they all creation and the firm foundations of the earth. 2. And I saw the cornerstone of the earth, I saw the four winds that carry the firmament of heaven. 3. 
and I saw how the wind spread the vaults of heaven and have their position among the sky, and the earth, these are the pillars of heaven. 4. I saw the winds of heaven that turn and bring the circumference of the sun and all the stars to its position. The sun and the moon. Psalm 19, 4-6, suggests that the sun sets at the ends of the earth until it is time to get up. Enoch expands on this idea. In the book of Enoch, 41, 5, he saw the storehouses of the sun and the moon, from what place they rise and to what place. They return furthermore, they keep faith with one another, according to an oath they and get up. Enoch analyzes in detail the solar movements and lunar, and explains why the apparent azimuths of their ascent and configuration vary depending on the season. The explanation, found in the section called the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries, begins like this, this is the first commandment of the luminaries. The sun is a luminary whose output is an opening of the sky, which is in direction east, and whose entrance is opening of the sky, in the west. The moon also rises and sets through the same openings, and they are guided by the stars. All of them one after the other in a constant order. First comes the great light whose name is Sun, its roundness is like the roundness of the sky. And it is totally full of light and heat. The car you are riding in is the wind blowing. The sun sets in the sky and returns from the northeast to go east. Is guided to reach the eastern gate and shine in the face of heaven. The openings in the vault of heaven in the east and west correspond to the seasons. 1 Enoch 73, 1. And after this law, I saw another law dealing with the smallest luminary, which is called the moon. 2. And its circumference is like the circumference of the sky. And his chariot he rides and is propelled by the wind, and it is given light in measure. 3. And its sunrise and sunset change every month, and its days are like the days of the sun, and when its light is uniform, it is equal to one-seventh of the sunlight. 1 Enoch 78. 3. These are the two great lights, their circumference is like the circumference of the sky, and the size of the circumference of both is similar. 4. On the circumference of the sun there are seven portions of light that are added more than to the moon. And in measures defined as transferred until the seventh portion of the sun is used up. According to the Book of Enoch, the sun is not immensely huge, nor is it millions of miles away. And the moon is not as big as we have been told it is and it is much closer than what they have taught us. Like the Bible, the Book of Enoch typically depicts the stars as anthropomorphic beings. Living. The sons of the gods are also covered in this book, and are associated with stars. This agrees with Job 38, 7 which that when the stone was laid angular of the earth the morning stars sang together and all the children of God they shouted aloud. As mentioned in the video above, Matteo 24 29 and Revelation 6 13 deal with the stars that fall to the earth. The image comes from Enoch, but Matthew and John omit some details. In 1 Enoch 88, 1, a star that fell from heaven is captured, bound hand and foot, and thrown into an abyss. A few verses later other stars whose sexual organs were like the organs of horses also. They tie hands and feet and throw themselves into the pits of the earth. Most stars only make their moves night after night. Some stars they are never put on, and Enoch was shown as chariots. The stars that rise and they set, they do it through openings in the dome, just like the sun and the moon. God according to one Enoch, has a tight universe. And the stars that they do not rise in time they are thrown into the heavenly prison. Showing Enoch a hellish scene, the angel Uriel explains, This place is the end of heaven and earth, it is the prison of the stars and the powers of heaven. And the stars that roll on the fire are the ones that have transgressed. God's commandments from the beginning of his ascent because they did not arrive on time. Enoch was not told that the sentence will be lifted later. But Uriel later shows him other stars who have transgressed the commandments of the Lord. 
for which they were going through difficult times for 10 million years. Enoch was also shown a place still most terrible, a fiery prison where the fallen angels were detained to always. Enoch has much more to say about nature of the heavens, the earth, the sun, the moon and the stars. He profoundly influenced Christian eschatology, and is a necessary reading for anyone trying to understand Hebrew religious thought in the early Christian era. The Bible goes on and on with descriptions similar to those mentioned above in Enoch. This ancient book seems to simply confirm and treat these issues as an old writing that is still valid. From their geographical and historical context, one would expect the ancient Hebrews to have a flat earth cosmology. In fact, from the beginning, ultra-Orthodox Christians have been addicted to the earth, arguing that to believe otherwise is to deny the truth literal of the Bible. Biblical scholars with views remarkably disparate independently concluded that the ancient Hebrews had a flat earth cosmology. often deriving this view only of the scriptures. His conclusions were dramatically confirmed by the rediscovery from the Book of Enoch.